In today's video, we're going to go over some creepy TikToks. Let's get into it. Nothing is going to prepare you for what you're about to hear. This man is about to reveal the hidden truth behind slowing down the aging process. Listen closely to what he's about to say and let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I'll tell you what the magic pill is right out of the gate. It's NAD or also known as NAD plus nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. That's a big fancy term. What does it mean? It means nothing. But what NAD does is recharge the mitochondria of your cells. Your health is equated to mitochondrial health. And you're not healthy unless your mitochondria are healthy. NAD recharges these mitochondria. What are the mitochondria? They're the powerhouses of your cell. They're the batteries. How do the mitochondria decrease in their power or their, their dimming like a battery? Well, age, stress, uh, alcohol, poor diet, medications. I mean, living your life on this planet, right? Illness, using drugs. All of these things decrease the mitochondria over time, but none more than age. As you get older, you have less mitochondria. So what NAD does is jumpstart these mitochondria. It has anti-aging properties. It has great cognitive properties, so you're better able to focus. You have better memory. You're, uh, yeah, you're, you think clearer, and that's how well it works. This NAD that he's talking about is a molecule in our body that we produce in order to convert our nutrients into energy. But as we get older, those NAD levels begin to decline drastically. So what many wealthy people have been doing is supplying their body with NAD to help slow down the effects of aging. That's because when you supply your body with NAD, you're helping to revitalize those cells and keeping your body energized. And the reason we haven't heard about it is because NAD injections are very, very expensive. It can cost you nearly a thousand dollars for one single session. But the good news is that NAD can be produced in other ways by using precursors like nicotinamide riboside, which is converted into NAD after taking it. You can even pair it with strong compounds like transverberatrol or curacetin that will improve your body's energy levels tremendously and have you feeling younger than ever. I definitely agree that certain supplements is good for the mind, it's good for the body, good for your eyes, everything like that. But for someone that says, hey, I have something that can reverse your aging and looks old, kind of makes you question if it's real or not, you know? Are they hiding more land from us? I think they are. If you've seen any of my videos, you know that I talk about how the globe deception was created to hide God from us, to make us think we are insignificant coming from a big bang billions of years ago. I don't believe any of that. I believe God created the place we live. And I think he also created more lands that we live. I think there are more than seven continents. In fact, I think one of those continents isn't even a continent, but an ice wall that surrounds our current living situation. See, I think there's a chance that we live on something more like this. A big, flat plain where we currently live is surrounded by a giant ice wall that I'm going to show you in a minute. And the 60th parallel is about around that, what that ice wall would be. And we're not allowed to explore any of this outer land. So this is a possibility. I think even something like this is a possibility where there's bigger and bigger ice walls. And for flat earthers out there, we know there's a dome above us. Maybe there's different domes in different areas. And I'm going to show you how this would even work and how the sun could even, the sun that we see could even work on all these different domes and different lands. I personally even like this one where potentially each dome is a higher level of vibration that you have to get to. We're stuck in the lowest vibrating area, but maybe... Through our first dome, you got to be vibrating at a little higher level. And then maybe that outer dome is what's called heaven. First, I want to show you this if you don't know about it. It's called the Antarctic Treaty. And it was signed in 1959 by literally dozens of countries, countries that you would never guess would be able to agree on a treaty, not only at the time, but for the next 60 years. Okay. So it states basically that you cannot travel to this below the 60th parallel unless it's a supervised guided tour, okay? So basically none of you watching this are allowed to go to Antarctica. And in the globe, Antarctica is a continent at the bottom of the map. The flat earth world, Antarctica is the ice wall that I'm gonna show you in a minute that surrounds us and keeps you from traveling to the outer lands. So I just wanna show you here, in the globe model, 60th parallel, it's here, it goes all the way around. You cannot go here unless you pay $30,000 for a guided tour that probably takes you like just to somewhere around Deception Island. Deception Island, yes. So let's show you what this looks like on the actual map of the world you live on. All right, so here's where you actually live. This is a map 
from 1892, an actual map. Notice there's no Antarctica on it because this is Antarctica, this ice wall that, again, I'm going to show you in a minute. It surrounds the other continents, and I would put my house on it, that there are lands out here that we are not allowed to go to. All right, this is actual Navy footage from 1957, and I'm going to show you this never-ending ice wall. And I even fast forward through it because the film is so long and it never ends. And you can research, you can go do this yourself. Go research what the highest land is in all of the world. It's Antarctica. It is the highest elevation land. That is easily researchable. They don't even hide them from you because it holds in our oceans. Look at this. It never ends. There's another shot here from a distant and they like pan. This surrounds us. This keeps us trapped in the known world. And I would, like I said, I would put money on it that there are lands outside of here. And I'm going to show you how that would work with the sun we have. Look at this. Never ends. Most of you probably don't even know this exists. This is Antarctica. This is the ice wall. It surrounds your known lands. And you are trapped here under a dome. All right, I want you to get a better look at this here. 1892 map. And this is what all the maps looked like before the public indoctrination centers funded by John D. Rockefeller started throwing the globes at everybody, okay? Look at this. There are actual maps that outline the ice wall back before they pushed the globe. Just want you to get a look at this. And I want to show you how the sun we see would actually work on the outer lands. Follow along next. On the right is an eclipse that I filmed. And on the left is an eclipse that I created from a rear projection onto a paper towel. So this is an eclipse that was filmed a few years ago. And it's about 90% eclipse. And we see these two little eclipse lights. Well, one of them that's moving around, that's clearly a lens flare. It's moving with the camera. But the other one is locked to the sun. The amount of the lit part of these little lights is about what the sun is in the eclipse, but you don't notice it because it's so bright it's blowing out the lens. But they do match. So what is that? I think it's the projector, the source of the sun that we see. Yep. So if we do my experiment, we get our paper towel sky, we have the rear projection sun, and it's being eclipsed by a disc. Nobody has ever seen the moon approach, eclipse, or exit the face of the sun during an eclipse. But if you look at the paper towel, which represents the sky, you don't see it. Here it is exiting. You don't see what's eclipsing the sun. You just see a circular shape. Okay, but what if this guy was more transparent? So now I have thinner tissue here and I'm doing the same thing. And look, right there, there's the source. It's not a theory. Mm -hmm. That is the source of the eclipse. That is the projector of the light. And when we compare them to an actual eclipse, it matches. Prove me wrong. All right, so I just want to clarify what he's saying here. He's saying the sun that we see, when we're outside and we see the sun, that's not a, one, it's not a giant ball of gas 93 million miles away. But what is that, what it actually is, it's like seeing a rainbow, okay? It's not something physical that's there. It's a projection from a light source that is beyond the firmament, okay? So I want to show you how this ties in to how there could be more land, more outer lands, potentially all with domes, potentially not. Um, but I want to show you how this works in my theory here, in what I say is potentially going on. All right, so here I'm taking my iPhone light and I'm putting it on a paperweight here. And it is creating a very similar thing to what it looks like the sun looks like in our field of vision. See that? 
So now what I did is I grabbed multiple paperweights all coming from the same light source and they all have that little glow that could be the projection of the sun in the different lands with potentially different domes above them. I can understand if you have a hard time believing that the globe was created to hide God from you. That's a hard sell. That's a hard jump. But what if your belief in this is preventing us from reaching our true freedom, our true freedom where we don't have corrupt governments ruling over us? Think about it. Sorry for the length of this video. I was actually really enjoying it. It was eight minutes long, but it was a really good listen. Normally when this guy says stuff, it's like really, really off the wall. But this one had some sense to it, and I actually like that. Um, the idea of the sun being projected from a distant planet is pretty neat. I like that actually, and I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to explain what that was that they're seeing that wasn't a reflection, but it did look like a solid mass somewhere behind the sun, which I've received some videos from some subscribers that kind of are similar, but that was very clear that there was something solid back there that was not a reflection and that it was being eclipsed. So I'm curious about that. Leave a comment on what you guys think it was because maybe I'm missing something scientifically, or that was some of the better evidence I've seen of a secondary planet behind the sun or a planet that's projecting light that we call our sun. That was really good. Apples are horrible for you. Yeah, they are. I mean. Why? Because an apple is not an apple anymore. Yes, it's, been, it's bigger. It's been it's hybridized as a for sugar. Yes. But it has high so, fiber content, it has polyphenols, it, all the things you just said are healthy. Nutrients. It doesn't anymore. But it yes, does. It does. No, it's been totally it, changed. It's yes. been maybe it has less vitamin C than 50 years. But it still it has, has vitamins. Look at research of people who consume apples, they live great lives. My what, patients who are unhealthy yeah. don't eat apples. When they eat an apple that's the right size. And guess what? Apples are not available year round. Normally. Again, all Back those in the old days, apples are different, that apples yeah. are not the same size, that they're not, shouldn't be available year round. And these How does that bring you to the deduction of apples are horrible for you? Because when you say apples are terrible for you, you're making this statement from a very knowledgeable position of the, the polyphenol change, this change, and you wish that they were a little bit smaller. And that's a big problem because your books are bestsellers. But and then patients go, I don't want to eat apples anymore. Great, because the apple they're eating is the wrong apple. I don't know how I feel about this. I get it that there could be modified apples that you don't really know what you're getting out of. They're probably pumped full of different steroids or whatever it might be. But that's not the case for all apples. For example, my grandfather, he still grows apples that he planted 50 plus years ago. And I love eating those apples. They're awesome. They're like Macintosh apples, uh, Golden Delicious. They're all really good. Maybe the seeds were genetically modified, but they've been there for so long that you can't say that they're being altered anymore because he grows them naturally. So not all apples are bad. I, I truly don't believe that. I think if you can grow your own apples, you're doing really well for yourself. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this pretty much every day.
I really can't tell if that's real or fake or not because it looks real until it moves. When it moves, it's very unnatural looking. It looks almost CGI'd, but the stills and the actual movement when it's when it's not moving, it looks very authentic. And if you notice when it's really zoomed in, there's a bunch of little sparkling dots that are happening around it. That was a really nice touch if it was video edited. But or it could have been like little drones hovering around it because that's what it uses for like surveillance and stuff. That was a pretty cool video. I just can't tell if that was real or fake. So leave a comment down below letting me know what you think it was. All right, guys. We're pretty sure we're onto a pretty big conspiracy theory here. So stay tuned. We'll show you what's going on here. And we are currently in a place that has this logo on there. As you can see, we're in that place. They're putting a new thing in. What's this little guy? Now we're not. We need to be a bit um, a bit quiet here, don't we? Quiet, yeah. Bit... We're not. We're not sure if they're changing from one to the other. I did hear a rumor that they are this particular shop that we currently are in are going to be stocking that Anko brand, which belongs to the other shop. But I don't know. I just can't. I think it's really odd that they've got one label on one bit. In yeah, a different shop. Weird. very interesting. 2024. Is in I definitely know that Target is partnered with Kmart. They're both owned by the same company. Uh, the company's name is uh, West Farmers, I believe. I'll do a quick Google search to see, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's that. And it's, it's not no big deal. Kmart's not really a running business anymore, but the name is still in the game. So I, this isn't really a conspiracy or a, a theory of any type. This is just people not knowing that Kmart is actually Target and they're owned by the same company. Why can I hear sound on this video if there's no sound in space? The ISS spacewalk videos are really cool. Well, this one in particular, is one of my favorites for a few reasons. First, this is Randy Bresnik, a little context. He took a GoPro out on a spacewalk with him in October of 2017. That's this footage. One of the first things I noticed is the sound, okay? You don't hear anything in the vacuum of space, but in this video, you can hear clicks and pops because sound does need a medium like particles to travel through. So the GoPro in here, anything bumping against it, it's like my hat here. It's transmitting sound through its own particles to itself. Its transmitter to receiver is itself. But anything outside that, there's no particles to transfer through in the vacuum of space. Well, things are hitting against the GoPro. But if you look, when he does the little clip on the thing, let's, let's replay that. you don't hear the click because they're not connected with particles. There's no medium for the sound to be transmitted through. I mean, technically the, the GoPro mount to the helmet, to the suit, to the glove, to the hook, they're, they're kind of touching like six degrees to Kevin Bacon, but there's way too much insulation there and it's not going to transmit to receive through that. We just don't have a whole lot of examples of this in space. And that's why this is one of my favorite videos. And at the end, Randy said he just kind of sat back and took in the view and said, wow. I mean, there shouldn't be any sound in space, but if it's hitting up against the GoPro, it's still going to create a sound. The reason why you didn't hear the clipping of the latch is because it was detached from the GoPro. There might have been a very, very light audio spike if you were to put it in editing software to see that there was actually sound that happened. This was pretty cool. I, I mean, I like to see the spacewalks and things like that because I'm always trying to analyze to see if it's fake. And uh, man, the planet looks fake. <laughs> it just looks so fake to me, but it, it, it looks real also. 
This is something straight out of a movie. Researchers in Italy figured out a way to create a self-sustaining 3D printing robot that is able to continuously print its own body using a rotating head that pulls filament up from the base, then creates new coiled layers, leaving a massive trail of filament, making it look like a snake. This thing is so advanced that it could even climb plants, vines, and uses sensors to figure out exactly where it's going. Now the question is, what happens if the nozzle gets clogged? Now the real question is, is, is how long will it take before they start implementing this to help build buildings for different structures and things like that. This is pretty fascinating technology to me, but I think it needs a lot more improvement. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. And with that being said, have a good day.